take you through on the characteristics of living things. We say that living things have characteristics which make them different from non-living things. These are, number one, we have nutrition or feeding. Now we say all living things take in food or make their own food. Food enables living things to grow, to develop, and to carry out your own life processes. So it means that without eating food, it means that living organisms will not get energy which help them to sustain life. So, nutrition or feeding is very, very important as one of the features of living things. Let us see a second characteristic of living things. It is respiration. What is respiration? Simply we say that respiration is a process by which Food substances are broken down to produce useful energy in a cell. So, respiration is there for the health of a cell. Now, we have to know that all our metabolic activities take place in the cell. Now, if the cell is not having the energy, it means that it will not carry out these metabolic processes. So, how does the cell obtain energy? The cell gets energy after respiration. What is respiration? The breaking down of food substances to produce useful energy. That way, that is to say, respiration is very, very important for a cell to survive. And the survival of a cell, it indicates the presence, the existence of a living thing. Now, let us see the next feature of living organisms. We say that it is excretion. Now, what is excretion? Simply we say, excretion is the process by which excess waste or harmful material resulting from the chemical reactions occurring in the body cells are removed out. So, excretion is nothing but removal of waste products out of the cell. Now, what are the examples of these waste products which are removed from the body? One, it is excess water. Two, it is ammonia. And a third waste product is carbon dioxide. Now, these waste products should be removed in the body so as to allow the cells to continue performing properly. Now, the removal of waste products is seemed to be very, very important because their accumulation could make the improper functioning of the cell. And finally, it would lead to the death of the particular individual. Now, after excretion, let us see the next characteristic of living things. It is sensitivity or irritability. What is sensitivity or irritability? Now, let us see. We say that sensitivity or irritability is the ability of an organism to detect and respond to a change in its environment. Irritability or sensitivity is the ability of an organism to detect changes in the environment. What are the examples of these changes detected by these organisms? A good, ex good examples of these changes are like change in temperature. I mean that it can be hot or cold. So an organism, if it is living, it should be in the position of detecting these changes, whether it is cold weather or it is hot. Now, the, now, now a living organism should be able to detect these changes. Also, let us see our next characteristic of living things. It is growth. Growth. What is growth? We say that Growth is an increase in size and the mass of an organism that becomes more complicated and more efficient. Growth. So, growth increase in size. So, 
when an organism increases in size of a given time period, it means that there we say growth has taken place. Now, growth is an increase in size and mass of an organism. After that, let us see a sixth characteristic of living things. It is movement. What is movement? Simply we say that movement is the process of changing posture or position of an organism. The process of changing position or posture of an organism. When we say that we are referring to movement. Now, further, movement, it can be of two types. We have locomotion, we have curvature movement. Let us elaborate one after another. What is locomotion? We say that is the movement that involves the change of position by the whole body of an organism. For example, in animals. The type of movement which involves the change of position by the whole body of an organism. Example, it occurs mostly in animals. For example, I think you see me well here. If I jump up to this position, it means that with my whole body, I have changed the position from position A to position B. Now you see my body, all body parts are in a new position and I have changed it from the first position. Now my body or my all body parts are in a new position. So this kind of movement is referred to as locomotion. Have you seen? Now let us see the curvature movement. Uh, curvature movement is the type of movement uh, which involves only change of posture by some body parts of an organism. For example, in plants. This only involves the change of posture. When we say posture, this is far the way an organism looks. For example, here, you look me, I'm this way. But at another time, I can be this way. This is a new posture. Also, you refer to me this way. This is a new posture. Or this way, this is a new posture. Or this way, this is a new posture. Now, this kind of movement, we are told that it is exhibited mostly by plants. Yes, it is true. You have to find that the movement which occurs the movement which occurs in plants does not involve the change of position of the whole body. No. The plants continue to remain in the same point, but its parts, some of its parts move. Some of its parts do change posture. Examples of the parts of plants which change posture are like branches, roots, branches, I mean that on the part of short and the roots do change posture, maybe due to growth. You can find maybe during root growth, they move from one point to another. It is searching for water, searching for other chemicals. Also, when it is windy, when there is a wind moving, you can find out that the branches of the tree can move in one direction or in the other direction, in one direction or in another direction. But you can find that those branches are attached to the trunk of the tree. So the trunk of the tree remains at the same position. Some of its parts, like branches, do change po posture due to prevailing condition of the environment, either due to the presence of wind or due to the growth. As the roots I have said, they grow, they move from one point to another. But they are attached to the same point of the trunk, which is fixed, which does not change the position. So, this kind of movement is different from that of animals, as animals do move with their whole body from one point to a new point. As I've said that, when I jump this way, I have changed with my whole body from one place to another, to another place. This kind of movement is called locomotion, but for the plants, it is curvature because only some body parts do change posture.
Now after that, let us see the last characteristic of living things. This is reproduction. What is reproduction? Simply we say, reproduction is a process whereby living things is a reproduction is a process whereby living things give rise to new individuals of their own kinds. Oh, the process whereby living things give rise to new individuals of their own kind. Now, in this definition, it means that these new individuals of their own kind are what we refer to offsprings. So it means that the, off off the offsprings which are obtained from the parents have the same features as their parents. Now, wh wh now when this process occurs, it is known as reproduction. What is the importance of reproduction? We say that this ensures that there is a continued existence of the species and life forms. So this means that reproduction, is, reproduction process is there to make perpetuation of species. Due to reproduction, it means that those organisms, some individuals die, but the offspring of their own kind remain. So the continuation or the perpetuation of the species. After that, we say that not non-living things are referred to as inanimate. So the term used to refer to the non-living things is inanimate. But the term used to refer to the living things is animate. So when you hear animate, it means that that organism uh, has features of uh, has features referred to those of living things. But in animate, it means that we are referring to non-living things. Yes, I hope from this elaboration of these seven characteristics of living things, now the concept is clear to you. So I take this chance to thank you for attending this session. I welcome you in the next sessions. Have a nice moment. I say bye.